I feel like I start every vlog looking like complete shit. <laughs> so people will probably like click my videos and go, oop, oop, no, abort mission. <laughs> So if you're still here, thank you. Thank you for manifesting that Beauty and the Beast energy um, and knowing that it's what's on the inside that counts. So even though I look like complete crap, I'm going to produce some decent content. Hey, I doubt it. So in this vlog, I'm going to be torturing myself, which is just cool. I'm going to be reading two of my most intimidating books. So I have a few intimidating books on my TBR, but these are two that I would say are at the top. I'm absolutely terrified of both of these for different reasons and we will go into that. So the first one is What a Ship Down. I'm terrified of this because, well, it's huge. Insert, that's what she said. Beam. That's what she said. And also, I'm pretty sure this is just about a bunch of rabbits being, like, killed. Very horribly, so. That's fun. I thought this also had, like, a lot of deep and meaningful content, but in the audiobook there was, like, a foreword by the author. And he said there's no, like, deep meaning to this book. It's just about a bunch of rabbits. So I'm like, so did people just make this shit up? <laughs> That's the first one. And then the other one I have here is The Green Mile by Stephen King. This is not as long. This is like a good length of a book. So I'm not intimidated by the length. I'm intimidated by the fact that it's Stephen King. I don't think it's like super scary though. I know there's like some fantastical elements to this. I know it's a bit weird, like a lot of his books, but yeah. But I've never read a Stephen King. I'm probably never going to read anything but this. Possibly Carrie. And um, I want to read the Shawshank Redemption short story. But yeah, those are the two things I'm going to be reading for this vlog. I hope you will enjoy watching me suffer. Oh, I know. I'm going to have some fun. invest in a ring light I think because I keep vlogging at night and it's just not good but I like money so I have read a ton today I'm on page 268 so I'm a bit over halfway and it's only just nearly eight o'clock so I'm still going to be able to get a bit more reading in I've had a pretty lazy day to be honest I've just kind of sat here and read I actually don't have a huge amount to say about this which is weird because I mean if you watch my videos you know I don't shut the fuck up <laughs> like a huge thing I'm working on is getting my videos to not be so long but yeah I just don't have a lot to say about this it's literally just about a group of rabbits trying to find a new home it starts with this rabbit called Fiverr who has had like a premonition if you will that their home is in danger and so they should all leave because bad things are going to happen. They're all going to die. And so the main character, Hazel, gets like a group of other rabbits from the group and they go off on their own to find a new home to start their own like, what's it called? There's like a name. I can't remember what it is, but like their own like group of rabbits. They just continuously get into trouble trying to find a new home. And they meet other rabbits along the way and other animals and it's literally just a story of their lives and how cutthroat nature can be and how humans interfere with that. How often a lot of people just think of oh, their animals and just kill animals that they think are pests without realizing that there's a whole like relationship and, and, and like system with these animals and we're seeing that through this book. And that's that's pretty much all it is. They're adorable. I love them, well most of them, and I feel really sad because I know that a few of them die possibly a lot I don't know the foreshadowing in this is just insane like I constantly feel like something bad is gonna happen every time a rabbit does anything like there's always so much hints that like they want to go out and do something but like they have to think about how dangerous it is and most of the time it's really dangerous and I'm like Jesus rabbits have a shit life every time a rabbit wants to do anything like oh I want to go out and shit and it's like I could die and may the odds be ever in your favor 
But I have a picture here by the Dawn Mist. I'll link it down below. I'm using it as a reference guide just to remember who all the rabbits are. It doesn't have all of them, but it has most of the main ones. Seeing this is helping me different shape them in my mind and helps me remember a little bit more because I feel like I'd probably be a bit confused otherwise because there's just so many rabbits and they're literally just rabbits and what they're described like is only done once and we don't really get many references back to that so I think that it's good having this little guide so if you do ever read this I definitely recommend um looking online there's quite a few but just like art people have done of the characters and done in a way maybe a little bit over the top but differentiates them so yeah, I'm just going to look at the picture and let you know who my favourite characters are. Um, I like Pipkin, but I feel like Pipkin's going to die. Like, every time Pipkin is, like, in a scene, I'm like, this is where Pipkin dies. Like, I'm <laughs> just waiting for it. I like Dandelion. Dandelion's pretty cool. I like Blackberry. Strawberry's pretty cool. I also kind of low-key hate Fiverr. Like, <laughs> I know I'm not supposed to, so it's, like, a horrible thing to say. I don't know, he just kind of annoys me. Like, I know he's doing a good thing and he's, like, helping everybody out because he's getting these premonitions. But he's just, like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just, like, so annoying. But, like, he's the catalyst of the story. Like, and he's, again, like, he's doing a good thing. He's helping his fellow rabbits. And, like, I understand if you had this, like, premonition that something bad was going to happen and no one was listening to you, you'd probably panic. Like, everything Fiverr does is fine. But Fiverr just pisses me off. And I, I just can't help it. But, like, if Fiverr dies, I'll be sad. I mean, I'll be sad for him, but, like, also be kind of happy because I don't have to read about him anymore. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It is many, many, many days later. Okay, that makes it sound like it's been way longer than it has. It's been, like, three days or something. I think I'm coming down with a cold. So my energy levels have been quite low. But I have been reading. I just haven't been vlogging just take it easy today so i think i'm just gonna rest close my eyes and listen to some more of watership down and i might try and finish this today i'm still enjoying this it's actually been like super super chill so far like this has been a breeze it's been so easy but i'm up to the part where like general captain whatever it is wound wart wound wat whatever his name is this dude and i told you that I would kill you myself. So, um, I feel like bad shit's about to happen. I don't know about you guys, but when I, when I look at that, I think, yeah, that's not going to end well. But yeah, I just don't really have a lot to say about this. This is just the sort of book where I just don't have a lot to say. Like, it's, it's good. Like, I feel like it's written really well. Like, these actually feel like rabbits. Like, I can picture rabbits really clearly, and I feel like if we were ever in a world where rabbits could speak this is what I feel like they'd be like like it just feels like this dude researched and understands rabbits this is coming from someone who hasn't done research and doesn't understand rabbits so like I could be talking absolute crap here you surprise me to how shit you are hello everyone please just don't look at my face maybe I should just do this the whole time I'm really not feeling well, so please ignore what's going on here. I just want all my hair out of my face because I'm feeling hot and stuffy. I don't feel great. My head's throbbing. I'm tired. I just want to curl up in a bowl and do nothing. But I did end up finishing Watership Down. This was not what I was expecting at all. And honestly, this is nothing to be intimidated by at all. Like, this is such a chill book. Just about rabbits. Um, wanting to find somewhere to build their own warren and they kind of end up getting into a war with this other warren overdose and that's that's like all the book is it's not a bunch of death I'm not going to say if anyone dies in this but I was expecting death on like nearly every page um and yeah it's it's not what I was expecting going in and this is not intimidating at all. This is quite a delightful little tale, honestly. Like there's obviously darker parts because it is showing the darker side of nature and is realistic in it. But it's also just like cute seeing these rabbits just try to survive and, and build a warren that's successful and, and care for one another and work together. And it's, it's really nice and I cared a lot about these rabbits. And again, it was written really well that they felt like rabbits and 
yeah i just think this is a really good book for people that love animals yeah i really enjoyed this i'm gonna give it four stars i was intimidated by this unnecessarily it was a good read so yeah happy i read it thank you to my sister for picking this for me to read for roll of read but now i'm going to read the green mile i have actually started what i look bad every time i look in the viewfinder i'm just like i look like a bowl of pus or something like there's no there's no coloration here like where are my eyebrows i'm a ball with eyes why can't i be cute though like bing and bong is it bing and bong, bing and bong. Bing and bong. Bing and bong. like i want to look like that i want to be cute like that but instead i'm like this if you don't know what the green mile is about the green mile is about that was such a shit way of saying that sorry the green mile is a book about a very tall black man who is convicted of raping and murdering two young girls and he is going to be executed and he has gone to this prison to the cold mountain penitentiary and he will be getting the electric chair and so this story is about his relationship with one of the guards at the prison leading up to his execution this is my first stephen king and uh, while I think he is not the greatest dude and he's not like an author I'm wanting to like promote on my channel or talk about much, um, I cannot discredit that he's talented because um, this writing is fucking good. Like, gee, Jesus, this writing's good. I want to read out like just the opening part that just hooked me instantly and I was immersed. This happened in 1932 when the state penitentiary was still at Cold Mountain and the electric chair was there too, of course. The inmates made jokes about the chair, the way people always make jokes about things that frighten them but can't be gotten away from. They called it Old Sparky or the Big Juicy. They made cracks about the power bill and how Warden Moores would cook his Thanksgiving dinner that fall with his wife Melinda too sick to cook. For the ones who actually sat down in that chair, the human went out of the situation in a hurry. I presided over 78 executions during my time at Cold Mountain. That's one figure I've never been confused about. I'll remember it on my deathbed. And I think that for most of those men, the truth of what was happening to them finally hit all the way home when the ankles were being clamped to the stout oak of old Sparky's legs. Yeah, just... He's, he's talented. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna keep reading and I'll give you more thoughts as I go on. But I'm I'm addicted. Like, I feel like I could possibly finish this today because I'm sick, so I'm just resting. I have been reading along, but, like, honestly, I could probably just close my eyes and be able to follow along and just rest. <laughs> Hello. This is just rude. How emotionally scarred I am from reading this and I'm not even finished. Like, the worst is probably yet to come. So... This book, guys, oh, I hate to say it. I really hate to say it. I hate to say that a Stephen King book is really good, but this is really good. I have never been so emotional about a mouse in my life. Like, I'm never going to look at mice the same way. I'm going to see a mouse and I'm going to burst into tears. This is such a difficult book to read. Like, it is just making me question everything. It's so fucking hard. Like, why are you humanizing and making me feel sorry for people that have done heinous crimes? Like, why are you doing this? Like, why? I feel like there is a pretty clear social agenda with this book. And, um... Not everyone will agree with it because it's quite a polarizing topic, but that's kind of the death penalty. And I think this is very against the death penalty. And I think that that's basically the whole point of this book. We have this man who has this magical gift and he is going to be executed. And I feel like the whole book is just saying in many different ways, but especially with this character, that the death penalty shouldn't be in because it's convicting and killing people that are innocent. And it is also killing people that still have a lot to give to society, even from within prison. They can still be giving back. And I'm not going to say if I agree with this necessarily. I'm not going <laughs> to put my two cents in. I'm just saying that's what the point of this book 
feels like like that's what his agenda is with this story we've got a variety with the characters there's like three men in this book that are to be executed at this prison and one is just completely fucked like not a good person clearly a psychopath bad person and so you're like yeah that person should be executed but then there's one who has done something heinous but he writes him in a way where we kind of feel bad for him but it's like but he did something fucking awful and it's like yeah he should be killed for that like he did something heinous but you feel kind of bad and then what happens to him is just like the most traumatizing thing I've ever read and I want that to be removed from my memory now. I feel like it's a Stephen King book what the fuck was I expecting like he wrote it for god's sake he wrote about the freaking killer clown like you're not very bright are you? I just Hello, I'm here to wrap up this vlog and talk about this fucker. So I finished The Green Mile and uh... So my friend Sharania picked me to read this this month. So Sharania, you are being held accountable for all of the emotional damage this book did me. You've done me dirty. <laughs> so I think I'm going to give this four stars. Obviously has done a good job because I'm scarred for life now. So, you know, it's done its job. But I can't not take into account that I feel like this has a lot of racial stereotypes and I don't think race is handled super well in this. Obviously a huge part of this book is talking about white privilege, especially when it comes to the legal system. Um, how people, especially in this time period, regarded people who are of colour particularly black but I'm a white person so it's really not my place to say whether it was done well or not. I personally feel like this was filled with possibly quite a few racial stereotypes. I think that the book focused mainly on the white character. We barely got any of Kofi which is just like annoying as fuck because we're all here for him so why the fuck was he given like no book time and I feel like majority of his story was to progress the plots of white people but the fact that this was about a white man and how his interactions with this black person changed and impacted his life and we barely get any of the black person is annoying and I don't like that and I can't not take that into account when it comes to rating this and I think that it could have been handled better. I don't think this is like a newsflash or anything that Stephen King doesn't handle race well in his books. I'm pretty sure that is a common thing and just all the times that the n-word was used I just feel like it was overdone. I'm like I don't we don't need you to say it this much. We don't really need you to say it at all, actually. Like, really. You can probably convey this without using the N-word. Like, it was used so many times and I just... I don't know. It didn't sit. It just was not good. So, that will wrap up this vlog. I read Water Ship Down and The Green Mile, two books I was intimidated by. I probably wouldn't have gotten to anytime soon without my friend Shrania and my sister Bronwyn kicking my butt and making me read these. And they were both four stars. They were both different than what I was expecting. This one especially was like not intimidating at all. It's a really good read. I recommend if you like classics um, and books about animals and you like rabbits. Obviously there's a little bit of fucked up shit but it's about 20%, 10% of the book. And then obviously this was four stars. Definitely an intimidating read. I was intimidated the whole time I was reading it. It was a lot. I feel like it is an intimidating book. Yeah, if you want to give it a try, just um, content warnings and be careful because it's not an easy read. And um, yeah, there's some images from this that are scarred into my brain. And again, never going to look at a mouse the same way. So, But thank you for being here. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Definitely let me know in the comments if you've read these books, what your thoughts are. And um, if you're going to read any of these, let me know. And I guess I will see you in another video, hopefully. But until then, bye. Bye.